Hey guys, how's it going? I'm trying something a little bit different today. Today I'm using a plain background. I usually film in my bedroom because it's the only quiet place in the house and everybody's home due to the pandemic. Um, my children are actually doing online schooling right now, so if you hear them in the background, I apologize. It's the best I can do given the situation. By the way guys, this video is brought to you by Audible. Please go to audibletrial.com slash theprecious to get a 30 day free trial and also get a free audiobook. That audiobook is yours to keep forever. It belongs to you. So why not? Go get your audiobook now. Today we're actually not going to be talking about a murder story. Today we're going to talk about a cold case. Not just one cold case. We're going to be talking about six active cold cases. Speaking of which, if you are aware of any interesting crime stories in Ontario as well as any active cold cases, please leave your ideas in the comment section below. I am looking for subject matter for future episodes, so I would really, really appreciate your help. Today we are going to travel to North Bay. So North Bay is a city uh, that has about 51,000 people. It is situated on the north shore of Lake Nipissing, which is how it got its name. It's about three and a half hours north of Toronto. Now what makes North Bay so interesting is the fact that as of the time I started researching this story, there were 14 active missing persons cases in North Bay. Now, North Bay Police and the Ontario Provincial Police, or the OPP, won't comment on whether 14 is a lot for a town of 51,000 people. However, it does make the place really interesting. And what makes it more interesting is the fact that six of those 14 people were patients at North Bay Psychiatric Hospital. North Bay Psychiatric Hospital opened its doors in 1952. About 14 years later, in 1966, the first patient vanished without a trace. That patient's name was Philippe Guerin. Philippe was 27 years old at the time, and apparently he just walked out of the hospital and was never seen again. Shortly before Philippe disappeared, his brother Omer Guerin had just gotten engaged to his girlfriend at the time who will later become his wife. Her name was Dora Guerin. And Dora has talked to the media over the years and said that they had just gotten engaged and they had gone home the weekend that Philippe had gone missing. They went to the hospital and asked them where Philippe was and the hospital claimed that Philippe had gone home for the weekend but they were just at home because they had just gotten engaged. Uh, they were just at home uh, and he wasn't there. So they knew for a fact that Philippe was never at home. Okay, so I don't know why, but instead of calling the police, the psychiatric facility eventually wrote a letter to the Whitfield Police Department. So this was prior to the police department being amalgamated into the North Bay Police Department. So they wrote them a letter and the police came and investigated. They tried to search the grounds and they were unsuccessful at locating Philippe. There was a clergyman who claimed that he saw Philippe hitchhiking and he had picked him up and dropped him off at Highway 17 and Highway 11. The person that he had given this ride to claimed that he was heading to Sacré-Cœur, Quebec. Um, police followed up with that lead, but they were unable to find Philippe. And Philippe's father does not believe that that person was Philippe. So he was pretty, pretty clear on that. He said that he did not believe that was Philippe. Unfortunately, Philippe's parents died without ever finding out what had happened to him. It's been 55 years, so if he is still alive, Philippe would be around 82 now. Police are still determined to figure out what happened to him. Uh, he is North Bay's oldest unsolved missing persons case. Now, flash forward 10 years. Norman Richard Welsh, who was originally from St. Catharines, he was actually vacationing in nearby Sturgeon Falls with his mother. On July 18, 1976, Ontario Provincial Police found Norman walking along a highway just outside Sturgeon Falls. They ended up taking him to a local hospital where they decided to transfer him to North Bay Psychiatric Hospital. Obviously, this upset Norman. He wanted to go find his mother. He wanted to go home, so he was pretty uh, aggravated. He was pretty upset. And uh, the following day, while he was at North Bay Psychiatric Hospital, staff were escorting him between some buildings when Norman took off towards the woods and he was never seen again. When he disappeared, he was wearing dark blue and gray checkered pants. 
Uh, he had a black and white checkered shirt and slippers and he only had $14 on him. Now, Norman requires medication for epilepsy. Apparently, when he does have an epileptic seizure, he has trouble recovering on his own. Uh, Norman was 31 when he went missing. So fast forward six years. Terry Anthony Zubko was born in Blind River, and he was actually living with his parents in Salt St. Marie. And he was admitted to North Bay Psychiatric Hospital in May of 1982. A couple of months later, on July 21st, Terry was given limited privileges, which allowed him to go outside for an hour by himself. So he was outside unsupervised. When he didn't come back inside, hospital staff searched the grounds for him, but they were not able to find him. So later that afternoon, they reported this to police. Now, uh, police came and searched the area, but they were never able to locate Terry. Uh, they received tips of sightings all around North Bay, but when police followed up on these tips, they were never able to locate him. Terry was 18 years old at the time of his disappearance. He was last seen wearing blue jeans, blue size nine running shoes. He was wearing a sweater with beige and brown stripes, and he was wearing a blue t-shirt. Terry has a slight scar on, the, on his lower forehead, and he also has a scar on his upper left nostril, and apparently he has a pretty huge 10 to 12 inch scar on one of his forearms, but they don't know which forearm it's on. Eight years later, 34-year-old Russell Hoffert was a patient at North Bay Psychiatric Hospital. On Friday, April 7, 2000, around 10 p.m., Russell was reported missing to police by the hospital staff. Now, they claim that he simply walked away from the hospital only wearing a blue long-sleeved shirt, blue jeans, and running shoes. It was negative 10 degrees Celsius outside. With the wind chill, they estimated it felt like negative 20 degrees Celsius outside. Apparently, there was a lot of blowing, drifting snow the night he went missing, and he wasn't dressed for the weather. Now, the North Bay Police Patrol and Emergency Response Team officers, along with the OPP K-9 unit, actually did a thorough search of him. They searched for him for three days, and they could not find him. He was never seen again. What's interesting in this case is that police specifically say that they do not suspect foul play. So Russell was a voluntary patient. He had admitted himself to the hospital. Regardless, there has never been any trace of him. Uh, they've never been able to locate him or confirm where he has been all this time. A little over a year after Russell walked out into a cold, dark, snowy winter night, never to be seen again, Don Eva Caris also disappeared. Around 5 p.m. on Thursday, August 9, 2001, Dawn was supposed to be having dinner with everyone else in her wing, and staff noticed that she wasn't there. Now, what frustrates me about Dawn is that she's known for taking off. North Bay Psychiatric Hospital, apparently they had some locked units, and then they had some unlocked units. Obviously, it's a psychiatric hospital, it's not a jail. However, I have vastly different experiences with psychiatric hospitals. I myself have never been admitted to a psychiatric hospital, but I did visit a forensic psychiatric hospital in Ohio. In that particular hospital, everything was locked. Um, the first thing about that hospital is the fact that they had, they had an Ohio State Patrol detachment in the hospital, so there were always police in the hospital. When you wanted to go into the building, there were double doors. There were double doors everywhere. So in order for you to get into the hospital, you had to be buzzed into the first set of doors. And the first set of doors had to be closed before they buzzed you into the second set of doors. Once you were in the lobby, all the hallways, all the wings, in order for you to access them, they all had double doors as well. So if you wanted to go to a particular wing, you would access a double door. And then once you were in that hallway, you would walk in the direction you needed to go. And once you reached the wing, there would be double doors at the wing as well. So I'm just kind of confused every time I hear stories about patients who just walk off. It really frustrates me. That's a story for another day. And also North Bay Psychiatric Facility uh, no longer exists. Uh, it's been torn down. So obviously, you know, policies and procedures were probably different back then. But anyway, back to Dawn. So at the time that Dawn had disappeared, she had been known for taking off. 
Uh, she had been at the North Bay Psychiatric Hospital for 18 years at that point. She was living with short-term memory loss and she was easily disoriented. Two years before she disappeared in 2001, she had apparently left the hospital grounds because she wanted to go visit her children. At the time, her children were living in Kirkland Lake and she was caught on Highway 11 trying to hitchhike in the opposite direction. So the belief was that she was wanting to go to Kirkland Lake, but she was disoriented and was actually heading in the opposite direction. Apparently since 1997, Dawn had eloped nine times and every single time she was found along Highway 11, which is the highway that the hospital is on, and she was always trying to go visit her children. This time around, they went and searched Highway 11 and Dawn wasn't there. Now this time around, there had been talks that her children were going to move to Sudbury. So she believed that they were in Sudbury and the hospital and the police believed that she might have been heading to Sudbury instead of Kirkland Lake, even though her kids actually were still living in Kirkland Lake. Despite following up on leads and going through the media, doing a thorough search, she was never located. There are two known sightings of Dawn around North Bay, but even though police followed up, they were never able to confirm if it in fact was her. Now, people describe Dawn as being very pleasant. Uh, police believe, based on her previous behavior, that she was probably trying to go visit her children and that she was heading towards Sudbury, even though her children were living in Kirkland Lake. We're gonna fast forward nine years later. So Glenn Wesley is a patient of the hospital. It's now known as the Northeast Mental Health Hospital. At 1 p.m. on September 15, 2010, he was given a short-term pass. It was actually his 28th birthday. They believed he was gonna head into downtown North Bay to go celebrate his birthday, but he never returned. His family members were interviewed and they claimed that they didn't know where he was. They never located Glenn. There are unconfirmed sightings of Glenn in the Cochrane, Timmins, and New Liskert areas, but police were never able to locate him to confirm if they were in fact Glenn. The North Bay Psychiatric Hospital eventually became the Northeast Mental Health Hospital. They eventually moved it to the nearby North Bay and District Hospital where they merged and are now known as the North Bay Regional Health Center. This particular site shut down in 2011 and there was actually talks about turning it into a regional jail. It was going to have 50 bed secure treatment units, meaning if there were inmates that required medical attention, they were gonna have 50 hospital beds for them. There was also gonna be 192 beds for short-term uh, sentences and also uh, inmates that have been remanded into custody. So basically people waiting for their trials or people who had short sentences. It was meant to replace the North Bay Jail and it was also gonna replace the nearby Monteith Correctional Facility near Timmins. It ended up hitting a snag when they found out it was gonna cost $15 million to extend city services and water services to the facility. It ended up being torn down in 2013. Now, I don't know if the property has since been sold. I have no idea. So North Bay police are working with OPP regarding a recent arrest pertaining to one of the 14 missing persons cases in North Bay. They haven't released the details of who the suspect is, who the victim is, and the nature of the crime. Hopefully those details will come out soon. At the time I started researching this story, there were 14 active missing persons cases on the North Bay Police website. As of today, there's only 13. Now, I wish I had kept a copy of the original list, but I didn't, because I'm curious to see which name has come off that list. I do know that all six patients that went missing from North Bay Psychiatric Hospital are still on that list, so I believe that the OPP and the North Bay Police are talking about one of the other eight cases. It's really important to remember that these are still active cases. They are not solved. The families have not received any closure. If you have any information pertaining to any of these six cases or any of the 14 missing persons cases that are active right now, please reach out to police. 
If you have any information, you can call 1-705-495-5555. That's the North Bay Police Service phone number. Press nine to actually speak to a police officer. If you want to remain anonymous, you can always call Crime Stoppers. It's 1-800-222-TIPS or 1-800-222-8477. Also submit your tip online on nearnorthcrimestoppers.com. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video so you can get more Monday mystery stories. I just wanna remind you guys that this video was made possible by Audible. So go to audibletrial.com slash theprecismama to get your free audiobook and free 30-day trial. That audiobook is yours to keep. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite audiobooks is Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Gillian Flynn was the lady who wrote Gone Girl, which as you know, got turned into a, a hit movie basically with Ben Affleck. Uh, so definitely go and check that book out. What I love about it is it's a psychological murder mystery, psychological thriller, and basically like all the things that I talk about in my mental health videos about like psychological abuse and things like that are addressed in this book but it's also murder mysteries. So it's like two things that I love in one book. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for coming out today and I'll see you next week. Bye.